the general form of the electric field phasor for a circularly polarized wave is E vector phasor, say it's propagating in the z direction, then it could have an x hat component, or it will have an x hat component, and a y hat component, and these both have to have, in order to trace out a circle, these both have to have the same amplitude. So we'll just say E naught for both of those. They can both have this constant E to the J phi naught um, term, which is constant in space. And then they have to be 90 degrees out of phase with each other so that um, you know, it points along the x direction and then 90 degrees later it'll be pointing along the other direction, so forth. So if I have e to the minus gamma z here, and if I also have e to the minus gamma z, for this y hat term I'm going to add an extra phase here, e to the plus or minus, depends on whether it is right or left hand circularly polarized, j pi over 2. Linear and circular polarization are two special cases. If a wave is not linearly or circularly polarized, then it is elliptically polarized. For the case of elliptical polarization, the electric field traces out an ellipse over time when plotted in one position in space. And just as for circular polarization, we can have right and left hand elliptical polarization. So what does this mean for our design challenge? If the wave is circularly or elliptically polarized, by the time it reaches the ground, then we would want our receiving antenna to pick up more than just the electric field oriented in one direction. If we still want to use a probe in our receiving antenna, how might we pick up more of the incoming wave? You can pause the video if you like. What we can do is add a second probe at a 90 degree angle to the first probe, like say like right here, in order to pick up both the X and the Y electric field components, assuming the wave is propagating in the Z direction, say the Z direction is into the horn. What this does is it gives us a dual polarization horn antenna. Having a dual polarization antenna increases the received power by about 0.6 dB at 1.6 gigahertz for the for a wave propagating through the ionosphere, so 0.6 dB. Now that might not sound like very much, but every bit counts when we're trying to receive a signal from 200 kilometers away. Take out your in-class project notebooks and write a few notes about the impact the ionosphere has on our signal propagating from the satellite to the ground in terms of the polarization and what type of antenna and what antenna polarization we would want a receiving antenna on the ground to have.